Art editor of Genius, Alice Blackmer Skinner. As George Dole has suggested, my Aunt Alice demonstrated a streak of the daredevil. She was one of the ringleaders at the Swedenborg Foundation Press who pushed the envelope, or in this case, the Foundation's catalog. She saw the output expand from 30-some bound volumes to hundreds of collateral products of literature, film, poetry, and fiction. And uh, here's one example. This is one of the issues of the Chrysalis. It's a journal of spiritual discovery and celebrating its 25th year this year of publication. Um, and there will be copies in the lobby as you uh, leave. I hope you'll take one and uh, uh, enjoy it. Alice was the art editor of Chrysalis. And if I were to place an ad for someone to fill Alice's role, it might go something like this. Wanted, art editor for the literary journal, must be acquainted with the classics, modern literature, all forms of poetry, must be well informed with philosophical thought from Socrates to Sartre, comfortable with psychological theory ranging from Freud and Jung to Piaget and Gardner must be in tune with music, sculpture, painting, dance, theater, must be familiar with the collections of the great art museums of the world, must be articulate, literate, diplomatic, must possess a warm and engaging spirit, knowledge of Swedenborgian concepts that connect with the arts required, fully conversant with bird songs, plumage and habitat a plus, Alice worked with a team of editors and book designers to produce Chrysalis. As one of its editors, it was my privilege and delight to explore the world of spirit through this extraordinary woman. Despite her remarkable intellect and scholarly abilities, Alice was first and foremost a team player. She was accommodating, inquisitive, and open-minded. In short, everyone's input counted and things got done. When I was a small boy, Alice was my go-to person, the adult I felt most comfortable with asking such weighty questions as, if there are angels all around us, why can't we see them? Do dogs and cats go to heaven? How could Noah's Ark hold all those animals? I remember Alice responding seriously to such questions shortly after she greeted me at the railway station near Clearwater Beach, Florida, my having freshly arrived from, on the train from Cincinnati. Alice could move seamlessly between worlds. Her answers made perfect sense to an eight-year-old boy, explaining how it all worked, the intersection of earth and heaven. So, too, could she place the perfect illustration in an essay or short story. No matter the subject matter, time after time her fellow editors would remark, how does she do that? As we viewed an unexpected image that went right to the heart of the content. Her art selections were ingenious. As in her expertise in cooking, Alice had that uncanny knack as art editor of adding just the right image, a dash of Paul Clay, a shaker of Picasso, a pinch of Blake, and a generous sprinkling of other artists, all perfectly juxtaposed to enhance and deepen the subject matter. She demonstrated in her own quiet but certain way that it takes knowledge and wisdom, it takes love and humor, it takes a steady hand in this art of living life to the full. I haven't received a call from above but would nevertheless be pleased to write a letter of recommendation for Alice. <laughs> a request to the powers that be to make room for an editor of genius on heaven's latest team of publishers. If in search of a title for a new series publication, perhaps instead of Chrysalis, it should be Butterflies Unlimited. 